You know, the human body is a marvelous thing. Uh, it can do things like have babies. It can also create great works of art and great engineering feats. Well, about 200 miles north of San Francisco every year, great artists and great engineers get together to create machines to carry their bodies across the most outrageous race you have ever seen. <laughs> Compared to kinetic racing, all other forms of human endeavor are insignificant. They call it the Great Arcata to Ferndale cross-country kinetic sculpture race, and this is a kinetic sculpture. But it also has to be a vehicle because it's about to take off on a three-day, 32-mile trip across roads, but mud and sand and water, too, so it has to float. And there's no engine or motor. They all have to be people-powered. Each. We have a five-gear speed down in the back, which runs off the common sprocket we've got up here in front. The five-speed is connected up to another sprocket, which runs back to the axle, which has five gears on that. So it's 25, usable of about 17. And that energy is transferred into the transmission, and from there down to differential, which turns the rear wheels, and off we go. Well, I've got a dual-chain drive. I'll hook up another chain, drive it off the five-sprocket rear end of the 10-speed. Floats will flap down, fold down. We'll support them underneath. The paddles will snip, snap onto the rear axle, and we keep pedaling. Just right in the water, over the other side, right out of the water, and victory city. That's what we're going to do, right? That must be your boss. I know. You can't drink on TV. You name it, somebody's put wheels on it and entered it here. Everything from a huge human wheel with inner tubes to a human-powered 15-man bus. The people-powered bus is the brainchild of Hobart Brown. It was Hobart who started this whole thing eight years ago. The ultimate goal is to get a human being to lever the energy and everything else to carry a payload like sleeping bags and survival equipment across mud, uh, sand, water, and everything else, and do it only with the leverage of the human body. This race begins with an Indy Le Mans style start. That's where the announcer says, Gentlemen, start your gentlemen. And they're all off and running. <laughs> The day begins on an easy leg, <laughs> over city streets, downhill. Then come the highways and the byways, even a trip along a dike and a marsh. And finally, everything comes to a screeching halt here, the sand. So far, 80 vehicles are still in the race. Only 40 will come out alive the other side of the dunes. I've never had so much fun. <laughs> Well, the afternoon is over and all of the haggard teams are now coming into the parking lot at the end of the first day. Some won't make it in until after sunset, some won't make it in at all. But right now they haven't got much time to do repairs and such because it's only a matter of hours before they have to head for the starting line again. problem may be what you call in France the Jacques Cousteau effect. You go into the water and submerge, and go to the bottom and see the fishes. Right now, all of the kinetic sculptures are lined up for the biggest event in day number two of the race, which is to cross one mile of this bay. Now, a lot of them float better than they roll on wheels, but the rest of them have never been tested on water. For some of them, this will be their first trip on water, and for others, the last. So far, we've covered 14 miles of mud, sand, and highway, and for what? There's no money waiting at the end of all of this. Since many of these contestants come from office jobs, they're not in the physical condition it takes to run one of these. Let's face it, this is a real marathon. Ask them, and they keep telling you it's for the glory. What glory? I've been doing this since I was 16, and he's been doing it since he was 16. I think we're pretty good. 
As a matter of fact, we're so good, the machine we built last year, the Golumpkis, the three-time winners, copied this copied year. this year, yeah. We figure that the sand is, uh, nobody can really go that fast, and we designed a super light rig so that we can just push it as fast as anybody could ride one. That's why we're in first. Okay, it's the start of the third and final day of the race in the morning. To make things worse, as if the dunes and everything weren't bad enough, it rained all night and it's raining this morning. Everybody is camped out there on that island in misery. They're going to have to cross this river of mud as the start of the third and final day, heading to the finish miles away. We are now barely a mile from the finish line in the Victorian village of Ferndale. It's raining even harder, and who's out a mile in front? Once again, the flying Golumpke brothers. That's really their name. Fourth year, fourth year, number one. So you think the long distance runner is lonely. Look at the finish line these Golumpkes are crossing. You could hide nuclear waste here and nobody would know. For the glory? Ask the rest of the field, still fighting the slog that even the cows have the sense to come in out of. <laughs> Depends on who you ask how long we've been racing. Seems like it's been three My months. My legs would tell you about six months straight. My back would tell you about five. My head says we're already playing for next year. <laughs> no, this race is not to the swift nor the strong, but to the sprocket-hearted. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> 